You know guys, many years back, I used to be very new in sales. I mean, I was perfectly new, fresh off the meat grinder. And back then I was actually still in engineering. And I remember I was in charge uh, at this time of you know a few different projects. Uh, I was the project engineer. And I was in charge of selling this one particular product as well. And I worked really hard on it. I, I called so many people, I met so many people. But here's the strange thing. No matter who I called, who I met, uh, what I did, uh, all the hard work, somehow I couldn't sell. I couldn't sell this darn thing. And you know what, there's this, I, I remember there's this one day I, I went up to my boss and, and you know, I was, I was looking like this, okay? Boss, I can't sell this darn thing. Please teach me how to sell. And I, I remember this very, very, very clearly um, because I believed him back then. And he said, Edmund, I can't teach you sales. It's a feeling you get. And I was like, and I was like, back then I believed him. Uh, you know, now I'm a little bit smarter. Uh, the biggest problem I had back then was this, handling objections. I mean, every time, every time I would go into the room and if someone threw me an objection, I, I couldn't answer, this is what happens. You know, um, good thing is um, I've learned since then. And, and, and here's the thing, here's what I've discovered. How many different object, objections are there anyway? I've discovered that there are something like, at the most, maybe 10 different types of objections. Well, maybe at the most, depending on your industry, maybe even 15. And that's it. That's all there is. At the most 10, 15 different types of objections you can get. And here's the strange thing. Even though there's so few, we still have trouble with these objections. Why? It's, it's like this. Um, you guys recognize this? Yeah, that's right. For those of you who did recognize this, you're probably Malaysian. If you didn't, you're probably Singaporean. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, Singaporeans are like you, okay? I'm just, you know, I'm Malaysian, so, you know, I have, I have permission to take a crack at you. So, if you know this, you're probably Malaysian. If not, you're either American or Singaporean. Um, and this is a shuttlecock, and people who play badminton use this. And the number one player in the world right now is this a gentleman by the name of Lee Chong Wei. And, and Lee Chong Wei is the number one player in Malaysia and number one player in the world. Um, but the biggest challenge Lee Chong Wei has is with his arch nemesis, the number two player in the world, and his name is Lin Dan. Now, we're not sure why this happens, but every time Lee Chong Wei plays with Lin Dan, all, well, you know, almost all the time, he loses. Yeah, sure, he's ranked higher, but he loses every time, oh, almost. And, and, and here's the thing, let's take a hypothetical situation. Uh, Lee Chong Wei, if you're watching this, right, that means you had a career change. And uh, go back to badminton, you know, you're, you're good at that. <laughs> and, and hypothetical situation. Let's say Lin Dan, every time he hits the shuttlecock, he hits it there. Yes, yes, right there. Every time, no fail, right there. He doesn't hit it there, he doesn't hit it there, he doesn't hit it there. He hits it there, right in front of Li Chong Wei all the time. Every time. But when Li Chong Wei goes back to practice, he practices the backhand, he practices the 
the, the lob, he practices the smash, he practices everything else. Except for that one shot that Lin Dan always hits, that is right there. Now, what would we call Li Chong Wei? Probably not very good names, right? Now again, if you're Li Chong Wei, you know, unfortunately you're a really good example to take. But this is a hypothetical situation, mind you. So let's say every time Lin Dan hits it there, Li Chong Wei never practices for it. We'd call him strange names. Now, if we would call Li Chong Wei strange names because hypothetically he does that, then why do we do it as salespeople? Why? So, there are only 10 to 15 different types of objections, at the most. So here's what I advise you to do. Right now, take out a pen and paper, or use a mind map, use whatever you can. Go and write down every single objection that you would ever possibly get. Look for a senior, look for someone, look for a colleague to help you. Go and write down every single one. And here's what you do. For every single one of these objections, come out with a great answer that you would be happy with, that the customer or prospect will be happy with. Just make sure you have these five different categories. Objections on value, that means uh, they say things like price are too high, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, they have no need or no want for it. Uh, There's number two. Number three, um, no time. You know, they want to procrastinate. Number four, uh, care, whether they trust you or not. Number five, uh, opinions. Okay, that means they need to go back to ask their wife and blah, blah, blah. So right now, take out a piece of pen and paper, write it down, be prepared for this, and I bet you in the next sales call you go to, you will be very confident. And you will turn from this to this. Have fun.